Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And as you know, Sheboygan County has 22 departments, nearly 1,000 employees, about a $140 million budget, a lot of very important work going on. And one of our department heads leading the effort in the Land and Water Conservation Department is Pat Miles. Pat, welcome. Good morning. Pat's been morning. with Sheboygan morning. County for a number of years, does a nice job in our Land and Water Conservation Department, and really some neat initiatives going on there. So Pat, please begin by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and, and when you started with Sheboygan County. Okay, um, I am gonna age myself here, but I did start with Sheboygan County in 1977. Um, a little background, I grew up on a dairy farm, Southwest Wisconsin, Grant County. Uh, graduated from Lancaster High School in 1973. Um, spent about a year out west, uh, roaming around a bit. Um, after that, I attended Fox Valley Technical College in Appleton. And as I said, I started uh, work here in Sheboygan County in 1977. So, and when did you become the director of the Land and Water Conservation Department? Um, I believe, believe that was around 1980, um, thereabouts. Very good. And, and I think many of our viewers probably, you know, when they hear Land and Water Conservation Department, they have a general sense of what that might involve. But what's the primary role and responsibilities mm -hmm. of your department? Um, as a department, we generally provide technical and, and educational assistance in the natural resources of, of Sheboygan County. Uh, protection, enhancement, et cetera. Um, as far as some of the responsibilities, we carry out the uh, conservation policies of the Ag uh, Planning Resource and Extension Committee of the County Board. And um, these include management of the uh, soil and water resources, uh, control and prevention of uh, soil erosion, and watershed protection. So natural resource protection and enhancement, what type of programs do you administer that help with that? Um, we have a variety of programs that are some local, some state. Uh, some of the state programs is the Land and Water Resource Management Program, and that's from the Department of Ag. Uh, we annually get grants uh, from that department to uh, administer cost share grants to landowners to install the uh, various conservation measures that are, are required as far as uh, watershed protection or, or soil erosion control. Um, locally, we have erosion control and a stormwater management ordinance, which primarily de deals with uh, construction sites. Um, we have a non-metallic mining uh, ordinance, which uh, basically deals with reclamation of our, our mining sites once they are, are completed mining. Um, we have our animal waste ordinance, which regulates the construction of animal waste facilities so that we're, we're sure we're protecting our groundwater and surface water. And we have our general watershed protection where some of those programs are primarily wrapped up, but at one time we had, uh, I believe, five watershed projects uh, in, in Sheboygan County, and that was probably one of the, one of the most in the state at, at any time. So. so a real breadth of, of responsibilities programs, um, predominantly helping with water quality, uh, you mentioned first agriculture and, and buffers and uh, uh, dealing with manure management. About how many farmers are there in Sheboygan County? Um, we have, according to the uh, 2007 agricultural census, about 1,059 farms in Sheboygan County. So that gives you a fairly, fairly good idea. So all these different programs ranging from working with both uh, farmers to landowners to non-metallic mining, which is mm -hmm. gravel pits and things Correct. of that nature. Mm -hmm. You must have a huge staff in the Land and Water Conservation Department. Ac how, actually, how many employees do you have? Actually, we don't. Um, uh, when we, uh, as I mentioned, when we had our watershed um, watershed uh, program up and running, we had, uh, I believe it was nine or ten employees, and that was about 10, 12 years ago. Uh, we are now down to five. Um, we have, uh, with those five we currently have, we have over 140 years of experience. So, I mean, that tells us most of our people have been around you know, a considerable time. Um, we have Eric, who has uh, been there about 31 years. Um, he's our engineering supervisor. He oversees all the engineering technical aspects. We have Chris, who has been there since uh, 1985, and he's basically our main conservation planner and uh, deals with nutrient management as far as animal waste. Um, we have Dave, who's been there since 1988, and he's basically our engineering guy, 
our CAD guy, which is the uh, computer assisted design or drafting. And we have Barb, of course, our secretary, who's been, been with the county for 20 plus years. So we have a wealth of knowledge and employees that we have. With, with uh, water quality and, and the number of programs that you identify that are to help improve water quality, why is that so important to the people in this area? Because I don't care who you are, we all use water, whether it's from the lake, uh, whether it's from the ground. We use it for uh, uh, washing, we use it for drinking, we use it for manufacturing, we use it for recreation. So with that in mind, we want to make sure that the quality of the water that we do use is, is, is of such that it's, we can use it and it's not polluted. Um, we're fortunate here in Sheboygan County that we do have good water resources, whether it's from Lake Michigan or from the, the groundwater that we pull out of our wells. And what, from your point of view with the vast experience you have and how long you've been in this position, how, we, how are we doing as a, as a county and a community with water quality protection and enhancement? Do you see, see uh, the water quality actually in, improving and our lakes and streams improving, groundwater protection improving, or do you feel that because of all the demands on the resource and what's happening on the landscape that uh, we're losing that battle? Um, personally, I, I feel that we're, we're improving the, the water resource that we have. Um, we have a, a water testing program underway, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, we've currently tested uh, wells in three townships in the northwest part of the county, and we have detected some slight elevated levels of nitrates and coliform bacteria. But overall, even in, in those areas where you have the gravelly soils, the water quality actually is quite good. Um, the Lake Michigan water, as you know, is um, very good. Um, city of Sheboygan, um, Village of Kohler, City of Sheboygan Falls, they all rely on that, on that lake for their, their drinking water and such. So um, you do have some major storm events where um, You'll have a short, short period of time where it'll have some, some effect from the surface runoff, but that's, that's probably um, inevitable. But um, I think overall, I think we're doing a good job. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you, Pat. Pat, about nine months ago, uh, you moved from what we call the Ag Building out in Sheboygan mm -hmm. Falls and Forest Avenue into the Administration Building. It was a, a part of a, a three-department move, but you consolidated into mm -hmm. the Administration Building with the Planning and Resources Department. And um, I'm just wondering, how has this made a change for your clients and customers uh, in the use of your facilities in, in your office? Mm -hmm. um, actually, since we've moved, as you said, about nine months ago, it was in March, um, Actually, the, our, our customers really have not noticed a change other than they may have to travel a bit farther into Sheboygan to visit us. And um, granted, that, that traffic is down a bit simply because in Sheboygan Falls, we were located next to the federal agencies, um, the Natural Resource Conservation Service and the Farm Service Agency, which are federal agencies. But overall, I don't think many people have noticed uh, any difference. Um, we still have contact, we have telephones, of course, we have computers, and we have field work with, uh, most of our work involves field work, so we're out in the field regardless if we were in Sheboygan Falls or the city of Sheboygan. So, um, to be honest, um, no change actually, except just for our physical move into downtown. So, and then it's been working well. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the benefits you've discovered uh, now that you are co-located with planning and resources to your operation? Um, <clears throat> I found, and I think the staff have found, that we have much better uh, interdepartment coordination. Um, we do have some programs that we work together on or they are related, and it's nice to be able to walk across the room and, and talk with uh, someone in planning or vice versa. Uh, we share office equipment, field equipment especially. Um, that helps, that cuts down on duplication. Um, we have, uh, as far as the department, we have uh, an improved computer, connect, computer connection with the network. Out in Sheboygan Falls, we were over the airwaves, we were having some difficulty as far as land records, the mapping aspect of the network. Uh, it's, it's much improved. And um, the public now has, has the, the public records all located in one place as far as the county agencies are concerned. Uh, the land and water is now in, in the administration building as well as planning, regist register deeds, and the treasurer's office. 
So it's kind of a one stop for public records should someone need those that information. So. It's quite a list of positives. I don't know if we brought all those up when we uh, dreamed up the idea of, of switching some of the departments, but I'm, I'm really glad that it's working out that yeah. well for you. Yep. And it's worked out much better than I anticipated initially, and um, it's, it's worked well. You're also working on a, a land and water resource management plan revision right now. Can you tell us a little bit of what's included in that revision plan? Sure. Last revision is, was in 2004. Um, the revision uh, that we have just recently completed is um, going before the State Land Water Conservation Board on February 2nd, I believe, in Madison. And uh, we'll be presenting a, a PowerPoint presentation. And at that meeting, they'll be approving that plan. Um, at, 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 after that, that time, we'll be bringing in a resolution to the county board for county board approval. It'll be introduced one month and hopefully acted on the following month for approval as well. But some of the goals changed. Some of the, the uh, goals that did change um, was the uh, emerald ash borer awareness. And I'm sure you've heard of that. Uh, I think most people have. That is something we're going to be dealing with in a, in a few short years. Uh, groundwater protection, we put more emphasis on that in the plan, uh, basically correlating with our, our water quality improvement program. Kind of ties in well. And um, nutrient management is something that we're going to be focusing more on. Um, there's more of a focus from the state and national levels as well for nutrient management work. So um, those are kind of the, the highlights as far as the, the plan revision itself. Are there any um, uh, processes or other improvements that, that are becoming about as a result of this new plan? Um, pretty much the complete list. Yeah, um, our erosion control and stormwater management ordinance we recently revised, uh, I believe it was about a year or two ago. That initially came about from the, the, the last revision. Um, of course, the grass buffer strip program was a result of our land water plan. Um, nutrient management planning, as I mentioned before, we were able to secure some grants from Department of Ag, uh, some cost share grants as far as implementing nutrient management with uh, some of the landowners in the county. And we, um, as I mentioned, we revised our animal waste ordinance here a while ago as well. So um, those things are reflected in the plan and, of course, um, part of the plan. So. I understand that it also includes a lot of agricultural statistics. Uh, could you give us an idea of what's included and maybe um, what conclusions you're drawing sure. from those changes? Sure. I'm going to be reading a little bit here because we've got a lot of numbers. So uh, as I had mentioned, in the two, 2007 Ag Census from the Department of Agriculture, uh, Wisconsin, uh, we have uh, 1,059 farms, and of those farms, we have only 200 dairy farms left. Uh, to put that in perspective, I think at one time it was probably uh, totally dairy. Um, we have lost 15,409 acres of cropland since 1992, and that's roughly 70% of a township. Uh, if you figure a township is 36 um, is uh, 36 sections or 36 square mile sections, 70% of that has been lost to uh, development. So I think that's sub substantial. Um, of the total county area, it's about 50, 551 square miles, and we have an average of 51 uh, dairy cows per square mile. Okay, and that makes us the uh, the 10th uh, heaviest concentration of dairy cattle in the state of Wisconsin, believe it or not, in Sheboygan County. Um, as far as an employment type uh, a note, um, farm-related employment in Sheboygan County uh, generates about 12,000 jobs in Sheboygan County, and that's about 21% of the county's workforce. So agriculture is um, a big business in Sheboygan County. So. Well, thanks for that information. What natural resource issues or priorities do you see that uh, really will need attention in the future, either drawing stuff from, from this plan or mm -hmm. from just uh, your information you gather in general? Yeah. I think um, nutrient management is going to be the big, the big issue in, in the coming years. Um, we do have, as I mentioned, 200 dairy farms. Some of those are quite large. Some of those are calf coal, which in a, in a layman's term means they have to have a, a permit from the state of Wisconsin. And uh, as a result of all that waste being generated, it, it needs to be applied properly so that we don't um, affect our groundwater or our surface water. So there's going to be a big emphasis on that as well as erosion control and stormwater management. As you know, we're under phase two 
of our EPA permit. So we're involved in some, in some of the uh, stormwater outfalls of the county currently uh, doing some testing on those and making sure that we don't have any industrial waste going in those. So those are going to be a little more emphasis on those two areas. So. Okay, well, thanks for that information. Sure. I'll turn it back over to Adam for wrap up. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Pat, earlier you mentioned the buffer program, and some of our viewers might be wondering, well, what is a buffer program? Mm -hmm. How do you describe that? Uh, in a layman's term, a grass buffer strip is simply a grass um, strip uh, next to a stream or a lake or a river. Um, it can be anywhere from uh, 20 feet wide to 100 feet wide. Um, in Sheboygan County, we established a countywide uh, buffer strip uh, program in, in 2000. Uh, the county board was generous enough. They initially funded uh, the program at uh, $35,000. And since then, we've been funding at anywhere between thirty-five dollars and $50,000 a year. Um, in a nutshell, landowners receive an upfront payment for taking that land out of production and leaving it idle uh, for a period of 10 to 15 years. Uh, they are allowed to um, maintain it somewhat by cutting it in the summer control the weed growth and, and, and stuff. Um, the, big, the big benefit of buffers is controlling the nitrogen and phosphorus runoff from the adjacent farm fields as well as the sediment. And uh, studies have shown that we can get a, a, over a 70% reduction in those uh, items as far as reduction with, the, with a 100 foot wide buffer strip. Um, to date, just to give you an idea of the success we've had with the, the county buffer strip program, we have 69 landowners that have contracted with Sheboygan County that install buffer strips. Um, we have a total buffer length of about 173,000 feet. That's linear feet. And if you can put that in perspective, that would be 33 miles long. Wow. Okay, so that's substantial. Um, Acreage-wise, as far as the buffer it, itself, it totals about 190 acres in Sheboygan County. So we've done a tremendous job with the buffer strip program. And again, for 2010, we uh, have dollars, again, available for landowners if they are interested in participating. So and it's, a, it's a low cost practice and it's very beneficial. It's an excellent program and I really compliment you and your staff on how well you've done implementing it. Um, as you said, in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty low cost. and and for our viewers who aren't sure, well, nitrogen, phosphorus, what's, what is all that? Essentially, when folks are spreading manure out there, exactly. if you don't have this buffer in place, that's going directly into our streams, which go into our lake. And once it's in the water, it's a real problem. And uh, if with those buffers there, not only does that slow down that sediment and, and keep it on the land where it belongs, it's also excellent wildlife habitat, whether it's pheasants or songbirds mm -hmm. or what have you. So it, it has just a, a real benefit across mm -hmm. the board. And okay. because of your good work and, uh, and the landowner's participation and willingness, uh, we, we're protecting our drinking water and groundwater. And, and I compliment you and your staff on the fine job there. And that leads me to the next question. You mentioned earlier that we have a, a water quality monitoring program in place. And as you know, this has been something that's been near and dear to me because as resources get tighter and everyone's demand, uh, demanding new services and, and looking for the, you know financial mm -hmm. resources to get things done, how do we justify continuing programs to improve our water quality if we can't tell people, mm -hmm. well, this is mm -hmm. the difference, this is the impact from spending these dollars on buffers or mm -hmm. others. So what is our water quality monitoring program? How does it work? What are we learning from it? Okay, our water quality monitoring program actually has a number of components uh, to it. Um, if you can go on the county's webpage, uh, look up departments, land and water, you can, uh, and, and you'll hit a tab, water quality monitoring. Um, you can get a nice overview of all the components of that program. Um, they include, um, we have a buffer strip testing site in the town of Sheboygan Falls where from the spring to fall we're putting, pulling samples from this site which is a, in, installed in an actual buffer strip adjacent, adjacent to a crop field. Um, that field has rotations of corn and soybeans on it, as well as alfalfa. So it gives us an idea of what we're doing as far as reducing the phosphorus, nitrogen, and sediment levels coming off that adjacent field. Um, we have, um, as I mentioned earlier, a well testing program. 
Um, we've done three townships to date. Uh, we've partnered with UW Extension and UW Stevens Point, where we'll have a town-wide um, program uh, on an annual basis. And landowners are encouraged to bring in their samples. Um, we do offset some of the cost. Uh, it costs the landowners uh, literally uh, a total of $7 for uh, a test. And there's eight different um, things they test for. Uh, the two main, the main items we're looking for is the uh, nitrates and the fecal coliform. Um, this year we received a stewardship grant from Sheboygan County as well as our, our regular uh, budgeted amount. So we're looking at either doing two townships or even possibly a town of Herman or village of Howard's Grove. Uh, the village Howard's Grove is the only municipality with total wells in the county. So we'd like to know if there's a problem out there. We can do a cross section of the town, the township or the village. It gives us a, a fair idea if there is a problem and it can be flagged for follow up. Um, some of the other components is the um, um, we have a buffer, a buffer strip uh, monitoring um, page where we'll have all the buffer strip locations identified. We'll have photographs of those sites as well as the annual reductions of those sites in, from nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. So you can go on that site and you can click on a particular contract. It'll bring up the actual photograph of the actual buffer in the summertime as well as the pertinent data along with it. And um, in addition to that, another component, we have our beach, uh, beach closings report, monitoring report. We don't actually um, take care of that. That's provided by the state, but we do have a link to that. And if you're interested in the summer about a beach, if you're going to the beach, you want to know the condition of the beach, you can hit that tab and it'll give you an update as if it's closed or if there's a warning. Um, that type of thing. So you go on the county website, look for Land and Water Conservation exactly. Department, and you can drill down right into this mm -hmm. water quality program as well as information on the sure. on the beach and closings mm -hmm. and, and the condition of the water. Mm -hmm. You've reported to the county board uh, from time to time as well as to myself and the uh, Resources Committee that uh, because of the buffer strips that have been put in place, literally tons and tons of soil and phosphorus and nitrates mm -hmm. have been kept out of the water, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but do, do you have a general recollection of since this program's been put into place, yeah. how many tons of sediment yeah. have, have been kept from going into yeah. our water? Um, if I recall, um, it's around, on an annual basis, around 800 tons per year reduction. And um, if I can recall again, that equals about uh, 53, 54 14-yard dump trucks on an annual basis. So just if you can imagine that number of dump, dump trucks right. going down to the lakefront and dumping that much sediment into the lake every year, that's what we're keeping out by our buffers. That's a great yeah. analogy. I think yes. that really gives mm -hmm. folks a better yes. understanding of just how much that's keeping mm -hmm. out. And economic development has become such a key issue for Sheboygan County as well as the state and the nation. We're trying to be far more proactive with economic development. Chairman Vandersteen and the county board is, have some initiatives in, in play to get more active in this area. And if we don't have good water quality, and That's if right. we don't have clean streams, and if we don't have a nice looking lakefront, and a, and a clean Lake Michigan, mm -hmm. who's gonna to wanna to start their business here? Who's gonna to wanna to bring their family here? Exactly. So the, the role of your department is exactly. frankly very important to the mm -hmm. success of our economic development and job growth in this community. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, um, in addition to the water quality program and seeing the runoff that's coming mm -hmm. off the land, and you touched on this, but just wanted to drill down a little bit more, the well water. All mm -hmm. the folks that live in rural areas or don't have a water coming from the city uh, they need to be concerned about the quality of their their well. And one of the things that happens sometimes in the country is folks build that new home or move to a new subdivision, and it may have been a farm 10, 15, sure. 50 years ago, and there might be an old well there yet mm -hmm. that hasn't been decommissioned. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of problem does that create, and what are we doing about it? Okay. Um, those are problems because um, those are direct conduits to the groundwater. Um, usually if those wells have not been used in some time, they've deteriorated, 
somewhat. The well casing probably is weakened. Um, and as I said, it's a direct conduit to groundwater. If, there's being, if the land is being farmed around that well very close and we have a lot of runoff, chances are that runoff's gonna go down into that well. Um, we do have a program to address that, um, and it's not very large. Uh, of the state cost share dollars that we do get from the Department of Ag, we do take a portion of that and we offer what we call a well decommissioning program, which basically will provide up to $1,000 per well to assist these landowners in properly abandoning these wells. Um, we need a certified plumber or well installer to decommission the wells. There, there's a certification form that goes along with it. And um, I believe last year we um, decommissioned probably about 12, 14 wells. And we plan to do so again this year. It's a first come, first serve basis. But again, there's, there's assistance out there. And if, so. and if you can imagine our viewers listening to this, that you know, if your grandchildren are going out to spend a day uh, in the rural area, whether again it's a newer subdivision or on the farm, and there's an old well there, and maybe you're aware of it and it's always been somewhat out of sight, out of mind, in an old milk house, in, a, in an old dilapidated barn, or maybe it's out in the backyard and it's got a tin can over the top, that can be an a straight source of contamination right into the groundwater. Once it's in the groundwater, you're not going to clean it up. And if they have their own well that they think is just fine, they're pulling from that same sure. source of water. Sure. So very important to get sure. those taken care of. And again, your department plays an important mm -hmm. role in doing that. We only have a couple of minutes left, mm -hmm. and I know one of the, the prides of your department is the uh, tree and shrub program sure. that you've had. And, and that's gonna be coming up here shortly. And you're, you've already got the order forms out there, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, very quickly, how does that program work? How can people get more information? Okay, um, our order forms are out. They've been out since October. Um, the last date to order is March 1st, which is coming up in a, in a month or so. Um, you can go on the county's website again, look up departments. Uh, there'll be a tab on our, our department webpage where you can actually bring up the order form and actually uh, fill it out. It'll compute it for you. Uh, taxes, costs, etc. Just print it off and you can mail it in. Um, each year we have uh, roughly about 80,000 trees that we, we sell through this program. Uh, minimum order is anywhere from 10 to 25 trees. And um, we have two new uh, items this year that we're offering, and we hope they catch on. One is rain barrels. Uh, as you know, you've probably heard a lot about rain barrels, where we're collecting rain off rooftops for use in your vegetable gardens, plants, etc. And we have composting barrels. So again, you go on our website, look those two items up, and if you're interested, you can order those. We, we have many available yet. And uh, the tree pickup is the last week in April. Our tr one day tree sale is, um, is uh, the Saturday, May 1st, I believe, or 2nd in May. Be, it starts at 12 noon out in Sheboygan Falls at the Egg Building where the tree pickup is held. So, um, so, if, so if they want to order, get on the website now, right. contact your office, and sure. they can order up through March 1st. March 1st. Pat Miles, Director, Land and Water Conservation Department. Thanks for joining thank us you. today. And thank you for joining us. Next month, we're gonna talk about a, what's a controversial topic, as you can imagine, a proposed 1.5% sales tax in Sheboygan County. And essentially what it, what it boils down to is fiscal responsibility, economic development, and providing property tax relief. And Pat, like many other departments, in fact, like the vast majority of departments in Sheboygan County, implement mandated programs and services and we're not receiving sufficient funds from the state or federal level to implement them. So Chairman Vandersteen and the county board either need to find another source of revenue to be able to continue providing programs and services or they're going to have to start making some significant cuts and of course that's a difficult decision to make if we want to um, maintain law enforcement, health and human services, and important programs such as what Pat's administering in the Land and Water Conservation Department. So please join us next month, and until then, stay safe.